Hello, my name is Sean, and this is my partner. Uh, my name is Mokhan Baraki. We are in Chem 343 uh, students, Dr. Mr. Kinnis class, uh, SF Sage. This is our presentation on the purification of alkaline phosphatase. And that was the enzyme that we targeted for this experiment. We isolated the enzyme from a K-12 strain of E. coli using various biochemical techniques. Our overall objective was to obtain increasingly refined aliquots of the target enzyme. Uh, a myriad of E. coli alkaline phosphatase literature exists on primary research databases and we extracted data from author studies regarding alkaline phosphatase to characterize our starting material. The enzyme is found within the periplasmic space of the gram-negative E. coli strain. Uh, the K12 strain is known to contain high levels of relatively heat-resistant alkaline phosphatase, and the alkaline phosphatase hydrolyzes phosphoryl groups with an active site serine residue nucleophilic attack in phosphate deficient conditions because phosphate is essential to cellular growth of E. coli. Alkaline phosphatase is a homodimeric enzyme with two zinc and one magnesium metal containing active site and the techniques used include osmotic shock, freeze lice, heat treat denaturization, dialysis desalting size exclusion, FPLC ion exchange column, and um, by researching this enzyme, we can gain further insight of E. coli resistance to antibiotics. And our primary goal was to end with uh, four fractions of increasing protein concentration. Furthermore, it was applying techniques to purify our target enzyme, alkaline phosphatase, and underlying themes included mastering these biochemical wet lab techniques and the principles behind the methodology, which my partner will take you further into. Here is the general reaction scheme catalyzed by our target enzyme, alkaline phosphatase. Well, uh, <coughs> as Sean mentioned, this uh, uh, experiment had like, um, multiple steps of methodologies that had occurred over seven days of lab days. In day one, we uh, prepared um, two solutions that are osmotic solution, uh, osmotic shock solution using the sucrose choice SCL, which is a pH of 8, and the magnesium sulfate. Then the second solution was dialysis solution from trace magnesium buffer, as well as um, HCL as pH 7.4 and magnesium sulfate. Then we weighed E. coli cells and treated them with EDTA osmotic shot for osmotic shock, and we sold our sample at uh, 4 degrees Celsius. And on um, at day two, we freezed out the solution protein and isolated by centrifugation, then we kept the supermethane as our fraction two, and from, as our fraction one, sorry. Uh, from this fraction one, we saved 1.5 microliters for, for the analysis of the protein. And uh, for our um, supermethane that we saved from uh, fraction one, we heat treated it and isolated sol soluble protein via centrifugation, which makes our uh, fraction two. Then, for this fraction two, we precipitated uh, it using soluble um, ammonium sulfate and stored it at four degrees Celsius and until like lab day three. At lab days, during the lab on day three, we substitute the solution to isolate the protein from ammonium sulfate and we cut the pellet and we dissolved the pellet uh, and injected it into dialysis cassette. Then we did the dialysis, then the, the dialysate, dialysate was pushed through um, the sulfate column and we collected uh, our fraction three and we stored it at 40 Celsius until day four. In day four, we dissolved the protein. Uh, now the dissolved protein was purified using an ion exchange chromatography with FPLC and this was to determine the fraction four from the most active uh, fractions. And we did um, Bradford and activity assays from for fractions one, two, three, and four. Then we start our sample line in day five. At day five, we concentrated uh, our fractions from one to four to get our target concentration in order to do the SDS page. And our target concentration was uh, 400 micrograms per milliliter. And on day six, we ran SDS page as well as cholesterol blood. 
And uh, during day seven, uh, love, we did the silver staining for SDS page. We used the silver stain instead of common silver stain. Um, and this is because our silver stain, our the silver stain in general is uh, more sensitive. And this gives us like an insight um, in or a, a result as in a quantitative way. And the Western plot uh, was uh, to determine the presence of our protein, which is a qualitative um, result for analysis. Here's the results from our FPLC protein purification graph. As you can see, the FPLC column chromatography with high trap Q anion exchange column was used with a stepwise NACL gradient by isoelectric point and an elution flow rate of 1 ml per minute. The absorbances measured from fractions 4 through fractions 13 were indicative of an equilibration and phase wash outbound. The results show the target protein for fraction 4 eluded between fractions 15, 16, and 17, with the peak concentration resulting at T16. As my lab partner McConan explained earlier, the silver stain SDS page was used as a means of a quantitative results for determining the molecular weight of our target protein. The molecular weight between 40 to 45 kilodaltons, which is seen increasing from well, two to three to four to five. As you move from fractions one to four by moving right to left on the silver stain, notice the decrease of impurities from the subsequent purification steps. Fractions one through four on western blot are shown from left to right. As you can see from our western blot, the qualitative analysis demonstrates that our target protein was present on the furthest most left portion of the western blot. The standard ladder is loaded in well number one. Okay, here I'm going to give you the results of the experiment as on type one shows. Uh, the total volume of fraction one, two, three, and four, we can see it like fraction two has the highest volume, and this can be the, due to the presence of ammonium sulfate that we have in fraction one. The total protein concentration decreases as we go like from fraction one, two, three, and up to fraction four. Total protein present and uh, or we have in the, each fraction is also decreases um, as we can see linearly. And uh, initial velocity also decreases as we go from fraction one to two to three and fraction four as well. And total activity at uh, fraction two is the highest and fraction four is the lowest. However, like fraction um, three and um, fraction one as, uh, are also like lot lower than fraction two. The purification fault, uh, we can say it, it is like one for fraction one, 0 0.87 uh, for fraction two and uh, 7.05 and for fraction three and 40 for fraction um, four. The recovery, percent recovery is also like 100% for fraction one, and it decreases as we go like to, uh, from uh, fraction one to two, three, and four. And um, uh, if we see the specific activity, it, is, it increases as we go from fraction one to two. However, it decreases as we go from fraction two to three, and becomes the lowest value at, at fraction four. Is the specific activity uh, it didn't increase linearly from fractions 1 to fraction 4. Instead, fraction 1 to fraction 2 increased, but fractions 2 to 3 and fractions 3 to 4 decreased. Um, this was due to loss of target protein during the concentrating step or um, excessive denaturization. Um, the total protein concentration decreased as expected from subsequent purification steps, as well as the total protein amount decreased from the subsequent pr protein purification steps. Um, v initial for F1 was the highest, but decreased from fractions two to three to four, um, further supporting the excessive denaturization from the purification steps. Um, the specific activity increased from fractions one to two, but decreased from two to three to four as seen in the previous steps. We're here to talk about alkaline phosphatase.